For the first time in history, couples with damaged genes have hope. Genetic diagnosis at the embryo stage is now possible. Hope walks hand in hand with the specter of designer babies. Breakthrough work, combining in vitro fertilization with genetic selection, could soon take things a step further by creating a healthy baby whose bone marrow will save the life of a dying sister. What could be wrong with that? The problem is that the technology is way in advance of legal understanding. Uh, the technology and the science changes almost daily. It, it's as if the law were running at full speed to catch up. It all began with Louise Brown, the world's first test tube baby, born in 1978. Human life could be created outside the womb, and thousands of previously infertile couples were able to have children. But there was another side to that coin. If life could be created in a test tube, how long would it take before scientists could read the DNA of human embryos and select specific traits in search of the perfect baby? Anne and Al Friedman have one child, Jack. Jack is dying of an inherited disease. The Friedmans want another child, but worry it also will inherit damaged genes. <laughs> We're not just having a child for Al and I, but we're having a sibling for Jack, and that feels really good. I mean, he, you know, he on TV, he smiles every time he sees a baby, and, you know, I think that could be really, really nice. Like the Freedmans, Jack and Lisa Nash want a healthy baby, but they want something more a baby with matching bone marrow, selected to save their dying daughter's life. It's never been tried before. We need to do it to save Molly, and I think we need to do it to make sure that we have healthy babies so another baby isn't brought into the world to have to go through what Molly has gone through. And she's no more worse for the wear, but she is. 80-year-old people haven't gone through in their life what Molly's gone through in two years. And she's a strong cookie, and that's good, and she's made us all stronger. Right? This man's genetic secret is known only to his family. Huntington's chorea will develop and claim him in middle age. He and his wife want to spend the time they have left raising a family. They want children whose future is guaranteed to be free of disease. I always wanted to, to be pregnant and have a child. Um, but the more I learned about the disease, the more I knew that I didn't, didn't want them to have to go through that. You know, we prayed about it a lot before we ever did it, but getting the news that they were Huntington free, that was very exciting. All these families have genetic mutations. Revolutionary science can now access the human genome to detect and stop the damaged genes from passing on to their children. Using in vitro fertilization related technology, they can now see whether the embryo and fetus will carry this genetic defect or not. So you could, you could take the abnormal embryos out and only transfer back the normal embryos. Genetic diagnosis works this way. An acid probe cuts through the embryo wall and a single cell is removed. The embryo is usually eight cells at this stage.
Inside the nucleus, there are 26 chromosomes. Inside the chromosomes are 80,000 genes made up of 3 billion parts. This is the human genome. When geneticists learn to read it in full, they will know the secrets of life. Genetic selection began at the chromosome level where hereditary diseases like muscular dystrophy and hemophilia show up. Genetic selection at this level is no help to the Freedmans. Their genetic problem lies inside the chromosomes amongst the 80,000 genes. This is how the genetic dice roll. If we think of the quarter, this quarter here, as a copy of the good normal gene, the part of the gene that's missing is the penny. So this is Mr. Friedman, and Mrs. Friedman is the same. Neither of them had any idea they carried this gene. And in fact, this penny, one with the missing part, has been in their family for generations. They're perfectly healthy because the good gene that they received from one of their parents is covering up the abnormal gene. And the penny just passes down from generation to generation, and no one knows about it until you meet somebody by chance who also carries the same penny. And now, you still don't know until it comes time to have a baby. And then, our egg can only give the penny or the quarter because our spouse has to give the other half. So let's say Al gives the quarter and Ann gives the penny. Then their child will carry the gene just like them, but it will cover it up and they won't know. But if by chance the egg and the sperm both have the penny, then there is no quarter to cover it up. And so that's what's happened with Jack. Man, you got it. Who's he? Who's he? Push, push. If he gets it just right, at the right angle, he can press it enough to trigger the song to go. But it's not easy for him. We'll need some practice. And the physical therapist was doing it in a way that got him more success. The Freedmans are both 36 and live near Philadelphia. At birth, their son Jack seemed fine, but by three months, his development appeared slow. Jack was taken to a hospital for tests. I knew at that time that something was really wrong, and then after that, when they finished that test, um, it wasn't even the neurologist, it was the people that did the test, and they kind of gave us the short version of what was going on, and so that was when we and it was basically the picture was that he was going to die. Jack has spinal muscular atrophy, SMA, a progressive muscular weakening. Now 18 months old, he can't walk or sit up. He is living on borrowed time. The Freedmans were warned that any future children would have a one in four chance of inheriting SMA like Jack. There you go. Is that better? It seems to me that there were three basic choices. Obviously, adoption was a choice, and uh, also using donor insemination to have a child who would be biologically mine and then use another man's sperm. The final option was a natural pregnancy, then amniocentesis. At 12 to 16 weeks into a pregnancy, amniotic fluid can be taken from the sac around the embryo for genetic testing. This gives parents the option of aborting a baby with damaged genes. That was not a choice for Al and I because that would be like aborting